Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game, and welcome back to Changeling, where things are gonna get more stressful than they were in the good ending for the sweet boy on screen right now. We are going to start doing Elliot's bad endings. So, we are here in chapter one, and at our very first choice, actually. So, right from the get go, we pick some new options. This time, we are not going to thank him for what he did by waking us up the very first time. For now, I just keep quiet about that. I wasn't sure how to explain it, and I was freezing my butt off. I just wanted to get back inside and warm up. I could always find a way to repay him later. Okay. So, good night? Yeah, good night. Okay. Is that... Okay, we're good to go. Excellent. Oh, Spencer, Spencer, you're gonna kill me so many times this route, aren't you? Between you and the Ferals and Grant and Brenna, I'm just like, oof. Alright, say, sorry, haven't seen them and lie to you. Sorry, haven't seen them. Of course you haven't. You never see them. Since I'm no longer riding with you, I don't have to keep track of them. I really couldn't resist the slight jab. I mean, it was way too soon to let him forget that. Spencer stormed down the hall and I rolled my eyes. Guess I need to look up how to appease an angry household spirit. Not that Spencer really deserved my help, and not that I'd get thanked for it, but his angsty mornings were annoying for me as well. Besides, the keys were one thing, but it apparently shredded his homework on Monday. That was a little too harsh. I had a theory as to how he made it mad, but I wasn't sure how easy it was going to be to make it less angry at him. Ugh. Yay, yet another thing for my to-do list. Alright, not yet. In any case, I decided to leave before I was accused of hiding the keys. Again. <laughs> okay, Brenna Cat, what do I do? Let the brownie fend for itself this time. I just elected to leave the cat alone. Far be it from me to interrupt some sort of weird, supernatural circle of life. Besides, I was pretty sure the brownie, or whatever it was, could defend itself. At least if I was judging by how well it played pranks and made a general nuisance of itself. It actually did catch sight of the cat before she pounced. With an offended squeak, it went skittering off. The cat took off after it, and the two of them shot off around the corner of the house and out of sight. Okay, so I didn't get scratched that time? Did I just skip the whole scratching scenario then? Hmm. So now what? Okay, so now I say that's really not necessary. You don't gotta watch out for me. I'll be fine. Ugh. I knew he meant it sincerely, but it was still kind of a creepy offer. I mean, he was basically asking if he could spy on me. No, it's okay. That's not necessary. I'm sure I can... Are you sure? Well... He must have heard the hesitation in my voice. I know it's probably weird, but I just don't want you to end up getting hurt. There are wild animals, the ravine, and other things. When you put it that way, I couldn't really argue. Walking into a ravine in my sleep sounded like a pretty bad plan. Oh yeah. Yeah, I guess. I mean, if you happen to see me, then it's okay to wake me up, but don't go out of your way. I don't want to inconvenience you. It's not an inconvenience. Alright, and there goes Spencer. Being a butt as per usual. Um, now what? Okay, he's hiding that book that he's helping us about, helping us with our fey problems. I was really, really curious what he could be trying to hide. It looked like a very old book. The cover was quite worn, and I couldn't imagine what some dusty old book had that was worth hiding. Hmm. I eyed the book, wondering if I could grab it away from him. But... Well, he'd been really nice lately. I probably shouldn't torment him too much. I decided to just leave it alone. When it came down to it, everyone had their problems. 
Maybe he was doing his own research on vampires or something. I shouldn't butt into it. We never did find out about his swimsuit magazine hobby. Hmm, suspicious. Alright, what am I asking regarding Brenna this time? Ah. You two going out? Are you two going out? We're not. We're definitely not. He answered that awfully fast. Oh, really? Really. It's just... We're just... Friends. I nodded, totally unconvinced. We are. Sometimes I wonder if we even that or if she's actually trying to kill me. But we're not going out. At all. Definitely not. Aha. Uh -huh. The lad doth protest too much, methinks. You're not believing me. I grinned at him as I started down the stairs. Nope. Not at all. We're really not. She's not my type. Oh, but I think you're her type. He shuddered and glanced over his shoulder worriedly. <laughs> Please don't say that. She kind of terrifies me. I think she terrifies everyone. I think so too. The two of us headed to class together after that. Elliot, as awkward as always, and myself highly amused at his expense. Poor Elliot. He doth protest, but maybe not too much. Um... This is about... What was this about? Ah, uh, body hiding. Ah, uh, the case. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um... Okay, this one this time. It's not like I tell anyone. Heck, I don't have anyone to tell. My best friend is in on it, and everyone else would think I'm nuts. It's not that I think you'd tell anyone. But, you know. They trust us to keep things quiet, and I'm just trying to do my job right. It's crazy that they're having high schoolers do work that requires keeping things quiet in the first place. We're not exactly normal high school students. That's true enough. But still, not being normal doesn't mean they should be burdening you with this kind of stuff. I volunteered, you know. Stop countering my irritation with logic. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your bad mood. Carry on. I made a face at her. All right, I think we're caught up again. Grand. This boy, too. Never showed up again, this route. Just came, stole my heart, left with it. Like, no big deal. <laughs> um, a representation of my true self this time. I guess she's a representation of myself or something? I don't really know. I've drawn her off and on for a long time. I don't even know why. Sometimes I sit down to draw something else, but before I know it, her face is the one that appears in my head. Maybe she's how you see your true self. What makes you say that? She's fey like you, right? I mean, she has the ears and all. I frowned down at the drawing. I started drawing her before I knew I was fey, though. As Jason and I were bent over my sketchbook talking, the door to the library opened. Hey, Elliot. And there he goes with my heart again. Um, not gonna get, be snippy with you, Grant. Yeah, well, I wouldn't wait for that if I were you. Grant just chuckled. <laughs> you and your brother really are alike. You're pretty unobservant for a psychologist. I started away without looking back. Grant didn't follow or say anything else, but Elliot kept pace, shooting me a worried look. Um, you okay? Yeah. I gave him a slightly sheepish look. I knew how that probably came across. Elliot didn't seem at all phased by the guy, but I just... I don't know. Something about him struck me as weird. It could have just been my prejudice against mental health workers in general, but still... Sorry if that seemed a little rude. 
I just don't have many good experiences with people like him. Well, that's understandable. I know you and Spencer went through a lot before you moved. Though I do think Grant's pretty harmless. You think? I glanced back, but he was already headed the other way. I didn't like that look he gave me. What look was that? Hard to explain, just... I took a deep breath trying to find the right words. When something like what happened to me and Spencer happens to you, you get used to people looking at you like they think you're lying or hiding something. And they get this weird tone in their voice, like they're digging for answers. It just feels sort of patronizing, I guess. That's the look in Tony had. Look, I might just be overreacting. I just have a sort of knee-jerk negative response to people like that. Spencer, too. Well, that's not surprising, really. I mean, I can't understand why you would. He definitely won't get either of us wanting to talk to him about much of anything, that's for sure. For the record, he's pretty well liked by students. I mean, cryptic students tend to keep their distance. Not much he can do to help us with our usual slate of problems, you know. But he's popular with everyone else. All the more reason for me to keep my distance from him too, then. Yeah, probably. I am surprised by the fact that a school that's primarily for cryptics doesn't have a cryptic counselor on staff. I feel like that would be important, but... Uh, let's see... Well, that's why I joined, right? Well, cleaning is why I joined, right? I know the club is just a front for keeping all the freaks all nicely corralled together, but I kind of expect a little more effort in seeming like a legitimate club. To avoid suspicion and all that. The members of this club are not freaks. They are merely not human. You're rather new to the community to have already adopted that sort of cynical mindset. Isn't that more a testimony to how the community behaves than it is to my mentality? <sighs> Velo sighed again. I seem to elicit that response a lot. You are not being corralled, and certainly not because you're freakish. If anything, it's for your own safety and personal growth that we've created a social group for young cryptics at the school. And the club works closely with the local paranormal management agency, as you well know. Each of the other members has prior commitments with them. So essentially, they are doing club-related activities. So I've been told. Yet I, also being a member of the club, get to stay here and clean. Are you not trying to focus on researching your heritage? Which is so easy to do while cleaning up Corvin's snack crumbs in Elliot's magazines. Velas gave me a pained look over the top of his glasses. After you finish, I'm sure you'll have time to do some reading before the afternoon is through. If you aren't too busy sulking. I am not sulking. Of course you aren't. I glowered at him. He was definitely giving me a look that indicated he thought I was being a brat. I mean, it is deserved. Maybe I was. No, I definitely was. I just felt left out. I was a part of all this too, wasn't I? Philos patted my shoulder gently and quietly went back to the library without another word. Alright, well, time to clean. Ah, we found Elliot's book. Because of Brenna? She was also Faye. Maybe he wanted to know more about her or something. But can't he just ask? And why would he hide it from me? Faye were definitely secretive. It's why all the information I had found so far was so basic. They didn't divulge their secrets easily. Maybe he couldn't ask Brenna because she wouldn't tell him. But Brenna clearly liked Elliot. Surely she'd tell him if he asked. For some reason, that left a sour feeling in my gut, but I tried to shake it off. And in any case, that didn't explain why he was so worried about me seeing it. Unless he was worried, I'd be upset he was looking into fairy secrets or something. Which was silly, because if it wasn't a book, it wasn't a secret anyway. Everything there was speculation and a few observations gleaned by scholars over the years. 
It's not like the books held the secrets to the inner workings of Fae society. Apparently, the few times someone had been let far enough into Fae society to write books containing Fae secrets, the moment they betrayed the confidence of the Fae, they were hunted down and their writings were destroyed. Found that little tidbit two days into my research. Besides, I had no reason to be protective over that information anyway. I was looking for the same things. Elliot knew that. Well, who knew? Maybe he was just curious. I closed the book and took it to the bookshelf, leaving it with my collection. Whatever. Okay. So she doesn't think it's for her this time. Does it matter with you? This time I say, what the heck? What the heck are you doing? I made a swipe for the book, but she held it out of reach, then dropped it to the floor behind her. What is the matter with you? I don't like you. I don't care if you like me or not. That doesn't mean you get to destroy Velos' books. Especially since he'd probably freaking blame me. She gave me a shove, and I was startled enough that before I could fight back, she had me pinned down against the arm of the sofa. I struggled, but she didn't budge. Why the heck was she so strong? Okay, we back? We back. And then she saved my butt. Okay, Mom. What are we haunted by? Haunted by what? Well, who knows? There are a lot of old mines in this area. Maybe it's a disgruntled miner. That hides keys? I mean, if we were finding mysterious holes in the wall or something, I could believe it. This seems more like a really cranky poltergeist. Oh, it could be that. <sighs> Great, I shouldn't be giving her ideas. Have you always been this impressionable? You know, I've heard that poltergeist activity can be caused by young girls. I glared at her. You are not allowed to start blaming me too. I wasn't blaming you. Traitor. Maybe I should have the house blessed or something. Oh, come on. You're not really going to do something that weird, are you? Oh, maybe your little club can come investigate. Ack! Abort! Abort! No can do. Everyone is kind of busy right now. You could at least ask if someone knows how to bless a house. Sure, I'll do that. Because having a high schooler bless the house will definitely solve the problem. It might! Yeah, right. <laughs> Hack! Abort! Abort mission! Alright, what do I feel about Elliot? Really? Elliot? Really? What's wrong? He's not bad looking or anything. Not your type? I don't know. It's just that he's kind of... awkward? I get the feeling that he's afraid of me. Probably more worried about upsetting you. He's pretty talented at putting his foot in his mouth. It's literally impossible for me to date someone who's that worried about upsetting me. Oof. I'm already constantly worried I'll hurt his feelings. Double oof. Then make an effort to be nicer. Nice isn't something I'm good at. Allie reached over and patted my shoulder. Yes, you are a little crotchety ball of snark, aren't you? It's why you're so adorable. I'm not adorable. Just don't shut the doors on love until you've given it a chance. You come up with that little pearl of wisdom all on your own? Yup! I rolled my eyes at her, but she just laughed. <laughs> the doors of love. Uh, let's see. Go bother my brother, because you guys are the bestest of friends. Then go talk to him. I was just helping you pick up your papers. I already said it before. I don't need your help. I punctuated each word with a full stop. I knew I was being rude, but I just wanted this guy to leave me alone. He couldn't help me with my problems anyway, unless he was secretly some sort of expert on the paranormal. I sighed and gave him a steady look. <sighs> 
And I doubt Spencer does either, to be honest. If you think I'm wary, clearly you haven't spent much time with him. I haven't, actually. And all I want to do is make sure you two are settling in. I know you had it a bit rough before you left. That's none of your business. It's a five-year-old incident! If you want us to settle in, then you and everyone else need to stop dragging out the past. Believe me, no one wants to walk away from that and never look back more than Spencer and I. So maybe just drop it? I just thought that with the current situation, you might be feeling a little stressed. What current situation? Okay, we back. We back again. Um... I joked with you last time, not this time. No, it's not that. It's just... I don't get asked that much. I mean, I do, kind of, but people usually ask things like if I really saw a murder in the woods, or if I really have amnesia. Not many people just ask me what actually happened like they really care instead of just wanting to hear gossip. Really? But I mean, a lot of the rumors are obviously not real, right? Someone said you were abducted by aliens. Exactly. It's just... People don't seem to care about the actual boring truth. I care. He was giving me such an earnest look. I smiled slightly. I wish I had more I could tell you about it. Everything I know about it was told to me by someone else. I don't... have memory of most of it. I remember wanting to take a walk in the woods, and... I remember going toward the trees. And then nothing until I sort of woke up in my backyard with everyone around me. I know that Spencer was out with search parties every day, and at some point he got separated from them. He screamed. They were trying to find him when he burst out of the trees in hysterics, covered in bruises and scratches. He had a hand to his eye like it was hurt, and he was crying that he'd been attacked. He was all scraped up. They thought maybe a cougar or something chased him. I walked out a few minutes later perfectly fine. Spencer lost the sight in his eye, but they never could figure it out. I mean, nothing was physically wrong. They theorized it was psychological, or that he hit his head and that caused it. At school, kids said he was lying, or that he was brain damaged. Kids are so mean. Yeah. It was... rough. I mean, for everyone. They said we just wanted attention, or that he tried to kill me, or I tried to kill him. I mean, you've heard all the stupid rumors. Spencer got the worst of it because when he first ran out of the woods, he was saying things like he'd been attacked by monsters, or that I wasn't me and that I was a monster too. Now with all this, I can't help but wonder if maybe he saw something that really made him think that way. I mean, not just a shadowy predator in the trees, but something real. Something supernatural. You're not a monster. No, I know that. I just... Look, Fae are a really diverse group. There are shapeshifters, there's glamour and illusion magic, and there are some pretty monstrous-looking fairies. I've seen them. Who knows what Spencer saw that day? And... I can't ask him. So I've been poring over books just looking for any clue that might help me figure it out. I apologize for bringing it up. That was pretty insensitive, huh? No! Not at all! I mean, it's just... Well, I mean, it's not an easy question to answer because I don't really know the whole story. At the time, I think everyone just tried to suspend belief because, well, it happened. When reality seems to defy belief, you find ways to make it plausible. Okay. I said you're cute last time. Ah, uh, nothing. It's nothing. I'd just really be happy for some help, actually. You would? Really? Sure! Did you expect me to say no? Well, maybe a little. 
Like I said, it's not like you aren't capable of doing it alone. I know. But there's a lot of material to go through. It's nice to at least have company while I'm going through it. Allie's busy right now, so I've been going at it alone, but it's just... frustrating, really. I can't promise it won't still be frustrating with my help, but... I'll try. I really appreciate it. Okay, I think we're back. Excellent. I've been pretty good at guessing when we're back this time. I should start studying somewhere quieter. Yeah, maybe I should start studying somewhere quieter. I try one of the empty classes, but they're kind of creepy. I really will be quiet tomorrow. I promise. Well, it's fine. In the end, sometimes just talking through it kind of helps me center myself a bit better. Um, am I back? I don't think so, no. Not going to lie, I've been feeling pretty overwhelmed. And I kind of feel bad for constantly dumping it all on Allie. So it's nice to talk to someone else about it. Besides, you have a fresh perspective, so it can be helpful to bounce things off you. I mean, not literally. Metaphorically. I don't know that I had anything useful to add. You're a suggestion to talk to Brenna, if we can just find a way to make her cooperate. That's true, I guess. We should probably head down. His statement was punctuated by the first bell ringing. I gathered my poor, neglected research books and left them stacked on the table as we left. In any case, I was the only one cl cleaning late lately, so I might as well just leave them there for later. Together, Elliot and I headed downstairs. This time, we weren't interrupted by Brenna on the way down. But he looked sad. Okay, so Spencer's standing in the door like a creep, so I'm gonna look. I... I'm going to look. He nodded slowly. I carefully pulled myself up and peeked over the back of the sofa again. The doorway was empty, and so was the club room. I breathed a long sigh of relief. <sighs> Is he gone? Yeah. I draped myself over the sofa and stared toward the door. Now he was stalking me around the school, trying to catch me in the act of... of... who knows what. I couldn't even begin to understand what was going on in that head of his. What I did know was that he was as suspicious as ever, and if he kept this up, he was definitely going to see something he shouldn't. Mind-altering spell or not. Why is he following you around anyway? I told you before, right? He's really suspicious of me. I think even more so because I joined this club. It's not exactly known for being normal. Did I... Okay, yeah. That time, we were back around. Okay, you guys. This time I, say I leave without saying anything. No, actually. I could do that. Or the aliens. Um... Let's leave without saying anything this time. Just for funsies. I just really didn't want to deal with people treating me like I was a juicy piece of gossip. Especially over an old story that no one should even be talking about anymore. Jeez. Some things never change. People still treated lives like entertainment. Two people were missing, and all they could do was eat up gossip about the new girl seeing something creepy in the woods once. I shook my head slightly. This is why I just like being around people. I slammed my book closed, and, shooting the trio a glare, got up and left. Were people going to relate every weird thing in the woods back to me for the rest of my life? As I stalked out of the room, I found myself really not looking forward to that. Okay. Didn't have a mark moment. I slammed out into the hall, planning to head up to the club room or something. Oh, apparently not yet. You're not planning on skipping class, are you? That would be unfortunate. I froze. Damn it, why is he everywhere lately? Now can I go? No, meh. I spun around, glaring at the man lounging next to the door. 
What do you want? You know... I know I try to stay casual, but I am a teacher here. <sighs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. It's alright. I heard what happened in there. I bit my tongue and didn't make a remark about eavesdropping. I was supposed to be watching over you guys, but I was running a bit late. I came in at the tail end of that. You okay? Wanna go to my office and talk? I'm not some traumatized waif that needs your help. I don't know why you're so determined to talk to me. Grant pushed off the wall, straightening as he crossed his arms over his chest. Really? You're defensive? Angry? Suspicious? You use sarcasm to keep people at a distance. And you're still incredibly sensitive about what happened five years ago. Sounds like you might be a little traumatized to me. Is that your professional opinion? Yes, it is. Well, it doesn't make me want to talk to you. I turned on my heel and started away, but he caught my arm. I'll make a deal with you, Nora. You can spend the rest of study hall talking to me, or you can go back in the cafeteria and finish it up in there. I don't bite. I just want to talk to you. I carefully removed my arm from his grip, weighing the options. I really didn't want to deal with more gossip. I didn't want to deal with that. I didn't really want to talk to him either. But one person was easier to fend off than 20. Fine, but I'm not going to your office. Okay, now? Yay! Now. Um... I think this is the same as last time? Hold on. Uh, yep. Yeah. Walking away. Okay, Marky Moo. I don't think it matters for you what I do, so, um... I'll do this one this time? Just for fun? Ah, I'm sorry to hear that. I think. I mean, that's a bad thing, yeah? I suppose it depends on your perspective. I don't particularly enjoy helping, but I'm also not pleased with the way this was handled, either. Ah. In that case, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. It sounded like he was kicked off the prep teams or something like that. I wondered what that was about. He didn't say anything else, and I felt awkward about asking about why he'd been removed. We walked silently the rest of the way up to the room. Okay. I do so enjoy our chats, Mark. Um, am I yelling at both of you? Yes. Okay, okay. Knock it off. Both of you. I pushed both their hands away from my face and stood up. Why are your hands so close? I looked down at Mark. And you, stay out of my head. Just because you can read my thoughts, that doesn't mean I want you treating my head like a library. Mark calmly took a sip of his tea, but it looked like there was a slight smirk playing on his lips. Mm -hmm. I told you before that it's hard to stay out of your head when you're screaming your thoughts at me all the time. If I knew how to not scream them at you, I wouldn't. I can teach you how to block him out if you want. You can? Uh, unlike Mark, I can't actually read thoughts. Just emotions. And usually only if I'm touching someone. Um, is that... Okay, we're back around, so that's probably something I've read before then. Um... Ah, this one. And I can honestly say this after this route. I'm just starting to really hate secrets. I wasn't trying to keep it a secret. I mean, I didn't want to actively hide it from you. I just... If you can't control the sleepwalking, then I was just worried you'd be really freaked out if you knew. I was freaked out to begin with. I'm sorry. I just... I should have told you. I know I should have. 
The truth is, I didn't want you to know. I'm also a vampire. I didn't want you to think badly of me. I'm more likely to think badly of you for keeping important things from me than for being a vampire. I'm sorry. Please. Don't. Please don't think badly of me. I don't want... I don't. I don't think badly of you, but... Please, just tell me something that's important next time. I definitely will. Alright. This will all get straightened out soon. I'm sure of it. Thanks. I'm sure it'll all be fine. Me too. I'll see you tomorrow. I gave him a quick wave and hurried out the door. Not nearly as cute as flicking his forehead. Um, what am I doing here? I want to get my mind off everything. And Elliot was always a nice distraction. His antics always had a way of making me smile. Maybe getting into town for a little while would help me forget what was going on in the woods behind my house. I hadn't slept at all because I was so afraid of wandering out there again. I'd been thinking about telling Allie about the sleepwalking. At the same time, I wasn't sure what she could even do about it. She wasn't a doctor. Unless she could help me go through a supernatural sleep study to figure out what was happening. Which I doubted. As it was, it felt like telling her would just be dumping my problems on her. And she was already really busy. Ugh. No! Stop thinking about it! The whole point of today was to forget about all this for a while. <sighs> Get me out of here. Um, okay. So Elliot helped me at school. Which I did before. Am I putting in effort? No, I'm fine. I shrugged it off. I mean, eh. I was fine as I was. We were just going out as a, as a friends. There was no reason to run around and overthink the whole thing. Besides, no one was going to notice if my hair was slightly less fluffy than usual or if I had different boots. And my lips didn't need to be extra shiny for a coffee date. They probably didn't need to be extra shiny for anything, really. But especially for anything where I just end up leaving awkward lip prints on things. Anyway, I pulled the door open and stepped outside. I just go ahead and go out to wait for him. Alright, so he's there, so he's not gonna notice stuff this time. Okay. Um, ah, pastries today. Pastries! We can save the coffee for last. If we get coffee first, it'll be cold by the time we get pastries. I see you've thought it through. When it comes to coffee, I always think things through. It's good to see you know what's important. I was relieved that he seemed nicely distracted from talk of anything related to the agency. I released his arm and we slowed our pace somewhat. The shop was still a couple of blocks ahead, but there was no need to rush. On our way to the corner ahead, we passed an old woman sort of slowly limping the opposite direction. Her head was down and long hair fell into her eyes. I paused and looked back after we passed her. Do you think she's okay? She seems like she might need help. Oh, huh? Who? He looked back, confusion written on his face. That... Oh! Goodness. Huh. Well, hello. The woman stopped and turned her head slowly, looking dead at me. Oh, shoot. Not human. Not human. Oh, you can see me. She smiled, her mouth crackling and seemed to almost break apart like bark or wood. Nora, let's go. He grabbed my hand and we both ran. Can you see her? Nope. Might be Faye. You and your nose. Good grief. Stop complaining and run. We blew through the traffic stop, crossing on red. Fortunately, there were no cars coming. We made it to the other side and kept running for another half block. I finally had to stop and catch my breath, though Elliot didn't even seem winded. Doubled over, hands on my knees, I let out a ragged breath. <sighs> Did we lose her? I don't... 
know. I can't tell. I could smell something, but it blended in with everything else too well. Still breathing heavily, I finally chance a look behind us, letting out a cry and staggering back into Elliot when she was right behind us. I'm not okay with that sound. Hello, dear. Oh, that's not good. What is that, like smoke? Hmm. She reached one long uh, bony hand out toward me. I tried to push Elliot back. Go, go! What? What is it? Who is it? Get out of here, you old tree. Tree? Wait, what? A broom swept through the air, hitting the sidewalk in front of us. The woman let out a hiss, but seemed to think better of staying. She turned and fled up the street, disappearing around a corner. Dang, she moves fast. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> Please wear this forever. <laughs> Please. I don't want to see you in anything else. <laughs> oh, this is this is great. Yep. You know what? I should have gone with pastries the first time. <laughs> Ewan. Holy jeez. Oh, hey, Jason. You two okay? I think so. I wondered what he and Ewan were doing together, but more than that, why did Ewan have a broom? How would you manage to attract that thing's attention? I don't even know! She just started following us! Are you sure you're okay? You look really pale. Just startled. I didn't expect her to be right there. I didn't even hear her following us. Well, you're lucky I was here to scare her off. Thanks, he shrugged. Anyway, what are you two even doing out right now? Heading to the bakery at the moment. Oh, you're working today. Unfortunately. I see. Man, I, and one of the things I was sad about in Elliot's route was there was a distinct lack of Ewan, so I'm glad he shows up right now. I was keeping him company. His dad made him sweep the sidewalk. Where do you work? Where do you think? My parents own the bakery. And now the name made sense. I'm really surprised how many shops in town are owned by cryptics. Pine Hollow has a pretty big cryptic population, actually. The layout of the land causes magic energy to pool here, so it attracts a lot of us. The owners of the convenience store I work at are vampires. Of course they are. Anyway, let's go inside. You're honestly white as a sheet. Yeah. Oh man, I was not expecting to be chased by creepy old ladies today. Ewan and Drayson led the way to the bakery entrance. Are we gonna see this? <gasps> we get to see it. Oh my god, look at all the baked gorge. As we went in, Elliot leaned closer, giving me a worried look. Are you okay? I'm so sorry. I couldn't see her. She was a fairy, so that's not shocking. Now who? Who's a fairy? <laughs> uh, hello? <laughs> hello there. Another fae, I see. I stared at the person speaking, and his kilt. Does he work here? He wasn't wearing an apron like Ewan. He also didn't look much older, and his hair. So much hair. This is your dad? This is your dad? That... Uh... Boy, I'm in... I'm in for it on your route. <laughs> I'm doomed. Oh no. 
so this is my dad, Logan. Your dad? What? How? He looked like a teenager. Then again, if he was Ewan's dad, he was fairy. So, immortal? Were fairies immortal? Did that mean I was immortal? Whoa, way too many sudden thoughts I hadn't really considered previously. Dad, these are some of my classmates. You know Elliot, but this is Nora. Red air. So this is the cute little fairy you were talking about at his school. I never said she was cute. You said she was cute. I don't know if I should be offended by that or not. She's definitely cute. Look at her, all tiny and stuff. Plus, I can appreciate a cute redhead. Dad, please stop. At least I'm not the only one with dorky parents. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy the heck out of you and turn so much. Anyway, she was nearly attacked by that birch spirit that's been lurking around since Overflow started. Birch spirit? Logan made a face. I'll have to have a little chat with her to keep her out of town. Especially if then she started to approach people. She didn't touch you anywhere, did she? No. She tried, though. Why? Birch spirits are dangerous. A single touch can kill you. Or drive you mad. Grand. Let's read about that, I guess. Birch spirit. Birch, 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 birch. Where are ya, ya old tree? Many trees are home to fairies and other strange creatures. Some are known to be benign or even friendly. Birch spirits are among the most dangerous out there. There is an old legend in England about birch spirits and how a single touch to the head can drive one mad. But a single touch above the heart, and you die instantly. Why do so many other fairies seem to have it in for me? Jeez! Logan's expression softened slightly, and he smiled. Well, I'm sure you'll be fine, if you're just careful. They're probably going to continue to be attracted to you until the overflow is over. It's not safe for you to be out alone. I'm not alone. Elliot's with me. But he wasn't able to help, was he? Ow! Look at what you've done to my poor boy's face! Look at the insult you did to my poor boy's face! Elliot shifted slightly, but when I looked up at him, he was staring at the ground unhappily. All right, you and your mother needs you in the kitchen. Can I go back too? Sure, but Melanie's going to make you do something about that hair. Why do you think I'm out here? <laughs> I guess that makes sense. I nudged Elliot gently as Logan shooed you and Drayson away. Don't listen to him, okay? He was right, though. I should have been more careful. All we did was walk down the street. But I know what it's like this time of year. Nothing happened. But it could have. I couldn't deny that, especially after what Logan had said. So, did the two of you come to just say hello? Or can I tempt you with some uh, croissants? Maybe coffee cake? I'll have a croissant. Grateful for the distraction, I pulled Elliot to the display case so he could pick something out. He chose a croissant as well, but was silent as Logan rang them up, and I paid. Wow, he really was thrown off. Thrown for a loop. Didn't even try to pay. Oh, Elliot. What Ewan said apparently was still weighing on him. Yep. Logan handed over my change and the little sack with the croissants. Be careful out there. Until overflows pass, there'll be a lot of Roman fae and drifters. It would be such a shame if an acute one like ye was whisked off to fairy by some solitary she. Alright. I, I love the dad so much. <laughs> Logan! I do love you, Logan. She is a really common word for fairy. You see it in a lot of fairy lore. It's pronounced she, and is a reference to fairy mounds or hills. The original phrase is Aushi or People of the Mounds. Probably did not say that right, but that's my best guess. I'll 
try to remember that. I took the bag from him, and for a moment he held my gaze, a strange expression on his face. I forced a smile and pulled away. Thank you. Tell you and Andreessen I said thanks for earlier. I'll do. We waved and headed back outside cautiously. The old woman wasn't in sight. Let's walk down to the murder and get some coffee. We can just go inside and sit, so it'll be fine. Are you sure? We can go home if you want. No, I don't want to go home yet. We haven't even done anything yet. I was supposed to buy you coffee. I took his arm and pulled him down the sidewalk. I'm just going to not look at anyone else. At all. I'll just stare at the ground. You'll run into everything if you do that. That's what I have you for. Okay, then let's head down to the murder. Hopefully Aya won't be too upset we brought croissants from the bakery. Aya? Corvin's really scary older brother. There were a few people out on the sidewalk, visiting all the little shops. Though I was doing my best to focus on Elliot and just... not look anywhere else. It was impossible to not catch bits of the conversations. And the topic of the day was definitely the missing high schoolers. Um, are we... yeah, we're back around now. Okay, so we didn't go get to the murder this time. Interesting. Um... This one. I just wanted one afternoon of peace and quiet, but no. How the heck did he even know I would be here? I didn't tell anyone else. But I did write it in my journal. Hmm. Then again, Spencer wasn't supposed to be able to read that. Maybe it was a coincidence. He could have been here for some other reason. Maybe he just saw us and was curious. Right. He came into town to meet the mysterious hoodie guy, and just happened to see us, whereupon he started following us for completely innocent reasons. I swear, if I find out he's hired someone to stalk me, I am going to murder him. Please don't murder your brother. It is very tempting. Alright, Mom. <laughs> I like that Ellie's like, please don't kill your brother. <laughs> Um, I should go. Ugh, I did not want Mom to come over and start talking to us. She'd undoubtedly humiliate me, and I knew she was going to find some reason to come talk to us. Though my idiot brother, and whatever he was up to, definitely had me more worried than just about anything Mom could throw at me. I should probably go see if she needs help. Or yell at her if she's following me around, spying on my... Dates. Stumbled over the word awkwardly. It wasn't really a date date, but I didn't know what else to call it. But she said she was going to get some shopping done, so she might just have innocently stumbled on the exact location we're sitting. Like my brother totally innocently stumbled on us. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's totally innocent. On both counts. I'm sorry. It's probably better anyway. Since we can't go through the murder, it'll be better to ride home with your mom. If you can, you should get home as quickly as you can. It'll be safer that way. I mean, not as safe as going through my closet. I can totally see that going over well. Sorry today didn't quite go as planned. I feel like we just ran around avoiding everything. I still had fun though. Yeah, sure. Getting chased... twice... was definitely fun, I'm sure. It wasn't that bad. At least the company was good. I'll see you... Monday at the latest. But not discounting a chance encounter by the bins before then. Also completely by accident. Your family and your chance encounters... I grinned and started away, but he caught my hand before I got far. Nora, um, before you go... Yeah? He was looking at me so earnestly. Color faded into his cheeks and he looked away awkwardly. I just... um... Okay, he's asking her out. For lunch? Okay, 
So you save me from the flashlight guy. Probably Grant. Elliot, what is going on? He peered down at me and pressed a finger to his lips as he tilted his head to the side, still listening. I glowered up at him in frustration. Was that the killer? Someone else? Why were we hiding? If he was going to keep sneaking up and scaring the crap out of me, he could at least explain himself. Besides, I was freezing. He was warm, but my fingers and toes felt like they were going to freeze off any minute. Who was that? Elliot gave me a slightly exasperated look and sighed and finally moved away slightly. Oh, I'm not sure, but... He shrugged out of his hoodie and handed it over. I hesitated, but took it and put it on. What? No. I'm not sure yet. There's something I want to check out first. G Jeez. W what are you doing out here? I thought you were removed from the prep teams or whatever. Don't tell me you were looking for me. No. Unfortunately. I had been keeping a lookout for you to keep you from leaving your house, but... What? Okay, are we back? Yeah. Uh-oh. X to doubt. You and Mark together? Why? Really? That was kind of hard to believe. Well, we're not thrilled either. But we're both off the prep team, so we kind of both have free time. You know? And it sucks being suspected of something we didn't do. Not just for us, but for a lot of other decent people in the vampire community here. So it wasn't just that he happened to see someone while keeping an eye out for me. He'd actually been out trying to find the killer? We can't just sit around and do nothing. No one else would come with me. I mean, Danny just had to wait for Velos. Which I do understand, but... I could see how that would be frustrating, but surely they had to realize that if they got caught, it would look pretty bad. As much as it sucked, the agency pulled them off the team and implemented a curfew for vampires for a reason. So where is Mark, then? We split up earlier, but hopefully he'll see the flashlight and realize I'm not following. He won't come looking for you? Probably not. It would probably be for the best that that really was the case. I didn't really want someone else knowing about my sleepwalking issues, so it was better for me if Mark didn't find out anyway. Still, he must have been pretty far off. I hadn't seen a single sign of anyone else out here. I wasn't sure how Elliot could be so certain Mark would chase the flashlight and not come looking for us. Elliot abruptly crouched down, motioning, motioning me onto his back. Alright. What am I doing with this? Hesitating. I hesitated. I mean, he was right. It just felt awkward. The whole piggyback ride thing was not something I was into. I don't think you can walk back like that. Don't your feet hurt? It's not that they didn't. It's really cold, and you need to get back to your house. If you walk, we're going to have to take it really slow. And that's more time you're going to be out in the cold. Well... He did have a point. I wasn't exactly going to be traipsing through the trees at high speeds. I... I mean... I understand if you don't want to be carried by me. I just think we should get you back fast, that's all. I'm not trying to do anything weird. When he said it that way, it was like he thought I didn't trust him or something. Yeah. That wasn't it at all. It just... It was awkward. Embarrassing. I huffed a frustrated sigh. <sighs> Fine. But if you tell anyone about this... I don't intend to do that. I climbed awkwardly onto his back and let him hook his arms around my legs. I held on tightly as he stood, burying my face against his neck in embarrassment. You okay? Yes. Now I was really hoping that if Mark was actually lurking about, he decided to follow Mr. Flashlight, because I did not want anyone to see me in that moment. I felt ridiculous. Let's just go. 
We walked in silence for several minutes. Okay, we... Yep. Back around. Uh, I think I say we're just friends this time. I wasn't entirely sure how to answer that one. To be honest, it wasn't that I wasn't interested, but there was a lot going on and it was hard to think about romance. Not to mention last night. The bloody shirt, all the hesitations in telling me what was going on. What was with the bloody shirt? Did we ever find out the reason for that? I don't think we did. And I had things I wasn't sure how to tell him too. Like the eye thing in the mirror. It was pretty clear we couldn't exactly be honest with each other. Oof. We're just friends, that's all. Really? Just friends? Yep, afraid so. Just friends. Sorry to disappoint you, but you will not be getting grandchildren anytime soon. Grandchildren? Who said anything about grandchildren? I am way too young to be a grandmother, so don't you dare even think about doing anything irresponsible! <laughs> I laughed at the utter outrage on her face. <laughs> you started it! Sorry you asked yet? That was not the answer I was hoping for. I shot her a teasing grin. I hope you think twice before you ask again. You are incorrigible. I learned from the best. I like how her face just immediately dropped to Mwah. Okay, Spencer and Elliot. This one I'm gonna hide and eavesdrop. I chewed my bottom lip. I wanted to know what they were talking about and why Spencer was sticking his nose into my business but I didn't want to fight with him about it. I looked around and quickly stepped behind our trash bins. There was a perfect little space for me to duck into without being seen. Okay, are we... No. Nora and I are just friends, so you don't have anything to worry about. So he only thinks of me as a friend. I didn't know how I should feel about that. I don't care if you say you're just friends. I know that's a lie anyway. Whoa, is Spencer being protective of me? That was kind of shocking. I honestly hadn't thought he cared about me at all anymore. I really won't do anything bad. I'm not worried about her. Are you stupid? Or not. What's that supposed to mean? I know the two of you have been hanging out together at night. She's been sneaking out constantly since we got back. Even more than she did in the city. Wait, what? So she's been doing this all along? But only is being cognizant of it here? That's crazy. I don't know what the two of you are up to, but I know she is hiding something and I want to know what it is. I think you're, uh, you're misunderstanding a lot. Is it to do with that stupid club you're in? Is that why you two were sneaking around town Saturday? I don't really see what the club has to do with this. And we weren't sneaking. I thought you were just worried about Nora. She's your sister. You're supposed to be worried about her, right? That person is not my sister. All I want to know is what she's hiding, and I want you to stay out of my way! I stood up right then, accidentally overturning one of the bins. What the hell did he think he was doing? If he wanted to hate me, that was fine, but confronting Elliot like this was not okay. It was stupid. And... and... And I wasn't even letting myself acknowledge how much it hurt. Nora? I looked up and locked eyes with Elliot. Spencer was standing just behind him, glaring accusingly. Elliot, I need to speak to my brother alone. I was going to put an end to this now. I was dealing with too much on a daily basis to keep putting up with Spencer trying to make things worse. I knew he was upset. I knew he was struggling to cope with things. And I knew that his fears and suspicions weren't entirely unfounded. But it wasn't my fault I couldn't talk to him about it. Um, there's no need for that. He started past me, but I reached out and grabbed his arm. Do you think I'm going to let you just walk away from this? Do you think anything you're doing right now is okay? 
What I'm doing right now is none of your business. How is this not my business? You're going to my friends behind my back to... To warn them about me? What are you even hoping to accomplish by this? I'm out of here. And like always, he walked away from the conversation and nothing was resolved. I watched him go, staring at him accusingly the entire time he backed out of the driveway. He didn't look at me again. All our problems aside, if there was one person I hadn't expected to be stirring up things behind my back, it was him. I was just so... angry. And he wasn't even around for me to yell at anymore. Um... Ah, gonna cry this time. I couldn't hold the tears back anymore. They welled up and spilled over. I was half hurting at having witnessed what felt like such a nasty betrayal, and I was half just furious at him. And I hated that the only thing I could do was cry like an idiot. I hurled my book bag to the ground, fighting the urge to scream. Where did he get off doing things like that? It was enough to deal with the rumors everyone else was starting, and now I had to deal with the ones Spencer was starting too. I worried about him. I tried to help him. I was doing everything I could to find answers so I could fix my relationship with him. And for what? This? I wasn't even sure it was worth it anymore. I crouched down, burying my face in my arms. Rain dripped down my face as I wept. I hate this. There was movement next to me, and I knew it had to be Elliot coming to stand next to me. A surge of self-loathing washed over me. I hated crying in front of people. Anyone, really. But I especially didn't want him to see me cry. I was too ashamed to even look up at him. But as much as I wanted to stay curled up in a ball forever, Allie would probably be arriving any minute. I had to get a hold of myself. I took a deep breath and stood, swallowing back the rest of the tears as best as I could. Less crying, more strangling. That was going to be my motto going forward. All right, then. I'm sorry you heard that. Yeah. Don't take it too hard. Okay, are we back? Yes. Oh, he still confessed. I was curious. Interesting. All right, Marky Moo. Uh, this time I'm going to tell you the truth straight up. I weighed my options as I looked up at him. They were few. I could tell him the truth, or just kick him and run. <laughs> I, lo I love when he responds to her inner thoughts. <laughs> I should just expect it, but it's so funny to me every time it happens. I wouldn't suggest the latter. Fine! I've just been sleepwalking, that's all. Sleepwalking. I guess that's what it is. I go to sleep in my bed, end up having some weird dream that feels like... I don't know. I don't know what it feels like. And then I wake up outside. At night. Alone. And you haven't told anyone else? No. I was going to tell Allie, but... I'm not sure I can do it without mentioning that Elliot's helped me a few times, and I can't really mention that part. Elliot only knows because he caught me doing it a few times. Well, and my brother knows. Your brother? Then I suspect Grant Mitchell may also know. What? Why him? Oh, not yet. Your brother's been speaking with him pretty regularly since you arrived. He's in his office right now. Wait, Spencer's the one in there with him? He was the one when she, like, just kind of blanked it. Dang. But Spencer hates... Are you sure about this? I've seen them together multiple times. Considering that Mitchell has always snooped around the Paranormal Mysteries Club, I'm not surprised he latched onto a student with a history to try to pry into things further. I'm surprised he hasn't tried to approach you. He has, actually. Several times. I believe he may also have been the person we saw in the woods last night. 
before Elliot apparently stumbled on you. But why? Why would he be... doing this? I have no idea. I don't know his history. I just know he's someone to look out for. And so is your brother. If fear of death isn't enough to keep you from wandering around at night, fear of those two blowing the cover off our community should be. Yeah, not sure that's worse than death, actually. And I'm assuming you've never had a sleepwalking problem before. Trust me, working out how to outsmart myself and stay inside hasn't been easy. Bleh. Get out of my way, Mark. Oh, she's gonna let him help her clean up her head? Hmm. I did as he asked, and he doused a cotton ball with antiseptic before reaching for my face. Turn toward me. Elliot got up and came to where we were, watching as Mark doctored the cut. Danny stayed where he was, looking for all the world like a worried dad. <laughs> Accurate. I'll do it. Mark looked at him over the top of my head and raised an eyebrow. It's fine. I shot Elliot a curious glance. Mark gently took my chin in his hand and forced me to look at him. Stop moving. Sorry. He moved my hair aside and placed the cotton ball against the cut. I hissed softly. <clears throat> the cut is right in your hairline. I don't think I can put a bandage on it. Don't worry about it. As long as the bleeding has stopped, I'll consider myself fully treated, doctor. He dropped the cotton ball in the trash and started to put away the kit. Let me see. He gently turned my face toward him and I sighed inwardly, wondering where I'd get control of my head back from these two idiots. <laughs> Give me my head back, stop turning me this way and that. Danny looked very suspiciously amused as Elliot examined the cut. It's just a scratch. He released my head, looking far more worried than the cut warranted. Anyway, I was about to head to the library to find Velos. Yeah. Alright, thanks Danny for being there for that amusing play. Am I yelling at you? Um... Hmm. My option actually says threaten them both. I don't have that as an option. Yell at them both, I guess? Did I miswrite that? Quite possible I was sleepy. Well, let's... you know what? There's always a way to ensure things. I set my cup down on the coffee table. Oh my god, if you two don't stop bickering like an old married couple, I am going to smack you both! <laughs> Seriously! Look! I get it, you don't like each other. There's a lot more for me to worry about than your stupid vampire rivalry. Oh, and for the record, I don't need either of you to worry about me. Much less fight about me while I'm between you. Just enough! I have had enough of all this! Every last bit! I fled into the hall just to get away from them, from the club, and everything. I'm so angry right now. <laughs> I like that Mark's face didn't change at all while she was going off on them, but Elliot just looked so crestfallen again. Um, there we go. Mark's the stupid one. Well, Mark's the one who's stupid. So there. He's not that bad. Oh, really? I'm surprised you're defending him. Thought you hated him. Hate's a strong word. I don't really even dislike him. I mean, he just tries to provoke me and stuff, but... He gave me a helpless shrug. We're both vampires. What, you can't dislike him since you're the same species? Well, I guess we try to stick together, that's all. I mean, you know, we try to be a solidified community or whatever. I actually hoped we could be friends when he and I first met. I guess you just found me annoying, though. Huh. I can't picture that. <laughs> right? 
I uh, complained to a random owl. Okay, apparently I haven't said this yet. Speaking of him, I think I saw him last night. Unless that was a normal owl I was complaining to about sleepwalking. He insisted on keeping watch for you. I said I would, but he said I'm better at scouting through wooded areas. Whatever that means. Okay, now we're back. We're back, baby. Um, what about this one? Ah, ask about the murders this time. How is that going? The, uh, murder thing. Not well. Still no culprit. The body count is adding up. Two of our agents disappeared, and one was found. That's disturbing. He was... He was not just a good guy, but also really talented. I can't imagine what's doing this. I can't believe you're caught up in it. That scares me. I'm not really caught up in it, exactly. They're not involving us in that. I'm really glad to hear that. To be honest, I've been really concerned about that. I hope you're being really careful. No hiking in the woods right now, right? Well, Vila's already warned me about that, so... Good. What about your preparations? Okay, so we come back to the prep anyway. Oh, and this time, I hesitate. I hesitated, unsure if I should go after him or not. Would he even want to talk to me after that? I wouldn't want to talk to me. I didn't want to talk to me now. I dragged my hands through my hair, tempted to just start yanking it out in frustration. You're not going to go after him. I gave her an uncertain look. Should I? He's probably mad at me. I made it sound like he did something wrong when he really didn't. I'm not even upset at him. I'm just... It's been a bad day. Elliot's not mad. I don't think I've ever seen him mad. It's true that he didn't exactly look mad when he left. Just hurt. I buried my face in my knees. I just didn't want to follow him because I didn't want to have to face him. I felt two inches tall. I don't know what to do. Go after him. You guys have to work it out now, otherwise it's just going to get even more awkward. Ugh. This is why I don't do relationships. I suck at it. Can't deny that. Thanks. Look, he probably went straight outside to hide in the parking lot until he calms down. Because if Danny sees him, he's going to know something happened. Yeah, I know how annoying it is to have a best friend that reads you like an open book. She smirked up at me. <laughs> I'll take your stuff to the club room. You can grab it later, okay? Fine. I started down the steps. And Nora? Yeah? Good luck. Thanks. Alright. I left her there, gathering my things up. I jogged toward the entrance, keeping an eye out for any teachers that might demand to know where I was off to. Instead, I just saw Mark. Oh, come on now. I slowed a bit as I reached him. Is everything all right? Have you seen Elliot? I have not. Ugh. Okay, thanks. I left him staring after me curiously as I continued to the front. Hopefully he was just lurking in the parking lot and I'd be able to catch up to him. Okay, time to eavesdrop again. What am I doing this time? I'm hiding again, because that worked out so good last time. I really wanted to interrupt, to tear around the corner and attack my idiot brother, to ask them who the hell they thought they were. I crouched behind the shrubs and tried to edge a little closer. Still, I was supposed to be finding Elliot, not playing out some kind of deranged high school version of James Bond. Just keep an eye on her for now. See if you can get anything else recorded. I'm still keeping an eye on the other two. I keep catching glimpses of them lurking around, too. The other two? Elliot and Mark? Anyway, for now, just head back inside. And send me the video, too. Okay. I stayed down as I heard his footsteps retreating. Grant, however, didn't follow. 
He went part of the way to the front door and paused. After a few minutes, he spoke again. Still going to hide back there. I froze. Wait, what? I heard him sigh, then footsteps coming closer. Dang, how do you know? <sighs> I popped up suddenly, instantly regretting it when I saw the smirk on his face. <laughs> Did he even actually know anyone was there? And what are you doing back there? Spying on your brother. That's pretty damn funny coming from you, under the circumstances. He shrugged. I tried to talk to you personally, but you weren't having it, were you? Because I didn't trust you, which, from the looks of it, I was right about that one. I just want the truth, Nora. The truth can be pretty dangerous. People can die from getting a little too much of the truth. You don't have to tell me. That's what got my brother killed. I glared at him as I made my way from around the shrubs. It was weird that he didn't really seem all that worried I'd heard any of that. No worry, I'd tell someone else. Tell Velos, the other club members. It made me wonder just what the story was with him. If you know that much, then maybe you should stop trying to drag my brother into all this. Is he really your brother? I... didn't have an answer to that. And even if I did, he didn't deserve to hear it. I left him there and hurried inside. Spencer was already far down the hall, and without thinking, I hurried to catch up to him. <laughs> Shock face. I grabbed his arm and dragged him into a side hallway. We need to talk. I need to slap you. Two firm hands suddenly closed on my shoulders and pulled me away from Spencer. Mark? As much as I am loath to get in the way of some melodramatic sibling feud, I highly doubt this is what either of you needs right now. Yeah, like, no, there's no way Elliot would ever say, what was it again? Um, loathe and melodramatic sibling feud. <laughs> that's, not, that's not an Elliotism. Mark. You may not have noticed, but you've acquired an audience. I glanced down the hall to see that a few students had indeed gathered and were watching our little spat. Ugh. And of all people, Mark saw as well. I wondered if he had followed me earlier. Well, he already thinks I'm hysterical, so whatever. I shot Spencer a glare. Fine. I'm done fighting with him anyway. I stalked away from him. I had no idea how much time there was before lunch was over, but I needed to get my things from the club anyway. Don't you people have somewhere else to be? No one left just because I said so, but I forced my way through them. Mark was right behind me. He followed silently until we started up the stairs. He finally caught my arm, stopping me. Now, this is an expression I've not seen on his face before. Nora. I looked up at him, sighing softly. <sighs> I'm sorry for having a melodramatic sibling feud in the hall. While that was foolish, considering how hard you've been trying to avoid attracting attention, I wasn't going to say anything about that. Oh. Then what? Elliot is an idiot, but I hope you realize he didn't mean to upset you the other day. I know that. I'm not mad at him over that. I'm not mad at him about anything. Mark glanced up above my head. Good. I'll leave you two here, then. <laughs> Alright, you know what? Good guy, Mark. He actually, like, spoke up for Elliot. Like, he wasn't trying to upset you. <laughs> Could you smooth things over with him? So, I applaud that. He vanished back down the stairs, and I looked above me to find Elliot standing there awkwardly. At least now I had the chance to talk to him. Elliot. I was looking for you earlier. Where were you? Um. Am I back? Yeah, I'm back. I watched him go, unable to stop him. Aw, she didn't grab his hand this time. I didn't know what to say. 
Maybe it was for the best to just set all hopes or thoughts of relationship aside for now. Elliot had his own problems to worry about, too. Maybe he didn't need a distraction right now, either. I just felt bad that he didn't let me properly ap apologize for what I'd said. When he was gone, I sank to the floor, gripping my head. Man, I was a big old dum-dum, let me tell you what. Alright, time to own up to the slap. Yeah, I did, actually. Mom blinked. I didn't think she'd been expecting me to just admit it. Why? I glanced Spencer's way. This was my chance to tell Mom that he was conspiring with a teacher, stalking me, recording me. But... Spencer and I both knew I couldn't say that. It was just more family drama that none of us needed or wanted. Ask him. He knows exactly what he did. Spencer looked away, expression guilty, but he said nothing. Nothing he could have done warrants hitting him. You'd think that. What does that even mean? It means that patience has limits. You know how he's been since we got back. And I've tried to just put up with it. At some point, I need to be able to stand up for myself. Standing up for yourself does not mean hitting your brother. Well, you would think it wouldn't mean that he gets to just choke me and drown me either, Mom, but haha, -ha, I have stories for you. Uh, it was a text from Allie, not from Elliot this time. Just checking in. I literally just saw you. So what? Mm. I'm fine. Mom was mad, though. School called. Yikes. Threatened to have his kiss and make up. Sounds like her. Seriously. Be careful tonight. I know that already. I tossed my phone on the bedside table and dragged a pillow over my face with a groan. Today sucked. But if anything, it showed me I couldn't just sit around or wait for things to work themselves out. I didn't feel I'd been doing that in the first place, but Spencer's attitude definitely put some pressure on to get this stuff resolved. I need to prepare for tonight. Okay. This time I'm gonna channel my Fey energy, because I'm sure that can't possibly end badly. Maybe I should try to... channel my fairy magic or something? Most Fey were pretty connected with nature. Surely... I had to have some kind of innate sense of direction or something, right? Maybe? Probably not. I actually hadn't really even attempted to use magic before, despite that I apparently had some kind of magic aura or something. I had no idea what to do, but... I took a long, slow breath and closed my eyes. It can't hurt, right? The forest around me was really quiet. Nothing was happening. No epiphanies, nothing. I stood there for about 10 seconds before I opened my eyes again, feeling rather stupid. Maybe I should have read up on this kind of thing. I mean, I liked nature and all, but I couldn't say I felt a special connection to it. Certainly I didn't talk to trees or anything like that. Fay or not, the most I was capable of was shambling around like a normal person. I was going to have to just go back the way I came and hope it worked out. You know, and hope I don't freaking die on the way back. I tried to quell the trembling as I did, and as I did an about face, and carefully headed back through the undergrowth trying to keep an eye out for vampires. Or bears. Which were less paranormal, but still capable of mauling me to death. This sucks. Normally I didn't find the woods frightening, even at night. Now though, just a little intimidating. Okay, so I need to save. This is our final choice. So we're probably going to start here for another ending one of these days. I must follow the music home. Yep, soulless, looking good. Against my better judgment, I edged that way. I wasn't sure why. I needed to get home. I needed to get out of this place. It was dangerous, but... Those voices. They knew me. 
I knew them. I was certain. If I just went to them, they would tell me all the things I needed to know. I took a hesitant step toward the music. A few pale fairy lights flickered in front of me. My mind went blank as I followed them. I was moving away from the bog. I was moving toward... safety. I was only vaguely aware of the direction in which I was going. Only vaguely aware of what I was doing. There was a faint form in front of me. Large, hulking. Oh, hello! It's been a while. The Spriggan. Is this where they put it? It was so terrifying the first time I saw it, but now... Somehow... I wasn't afraid. It beckoned me to follow. And I did so without question. There was heavy mist ahead of us. It disappeared and... For a moment, I panicked suddenly alone. I picked up the pace and staggered forward, shoeless and covered in muck. And then... Whoa! I stepped into that mist and it was like a light went off in my head. This was... This is what I'd been looking for. I knew where we were going. And I knew there was a piece of me there I needed to get back there. And I knew there was a part of me waiting on the other side. A part of me that I hadn't realized I was missing until that moment. But if I went there, going home would be impossible. No, wait! This isn't what I wanted! I needed to get back home! But my body wouldn't listen as I tried to turn around. My feet kept staggering forward no matter how much I tried to turn back. I was overcome with heavy sleep. My vision went dark and the singing was loud in my ears. Everything faded to white. And I knew they'd won. They had finally, finally gotten me back. If you have tears, prepare to shed them now. <laughs> William Shakespeare. Which play is that from? Interesting. All right. What did we get? Tears to shed. Interesting. Why tears, cousin? Well, there you go. Our first bad ending. Following Faye music equals bad end. But at least we were not killed, technically, so there's that. <laughs> Alright, guys, well, we got our first bad ending. So thank you very much for joining me for that. Hopefully I will see you for bad ending number two.